Welcome to the Football Show on PLZ Soccer's YouTube channel. I'm Peter Martin, Alan Ruff, Lee McCulloch and Tam McManus are here with me. And here's what's coming up. Rangers have been dealt another injury blow with Kimar Roof out as Michael Beale confirms the striker has been sent for a scan. No, listen, until we get the news back from the scan, we don't know really what we're dealing with. Brendan Rodgers claims Celtic have taken a big mental step forward after three straight domestic wins ahead of their clash against Motherwell. Ross County boss Malky Mackay demands an SPFL summit for clear the air talks over VAR decisions after the recent controversy. You're... Um, comment box on the officials in the evening. Um, for some reason we don't have that in Scotland. Jurgen Klopp points to Celtic's success as he claims it was obvious the style Ange Postecoglou would bring into top. When you saw Celtic playing recent years, um, what kind of coach he is, how good he is as a coach. And yeah, we'll hear from Jurgen Klopp a little later in the programme, but uh, lots to discuss, including, of course, the draw for the via play League Cup semi-finals. The quarter-final ties were played in midweek. We'll also look ahead to the Scottish Premiership fixtures, all six of them on the Saturday, which is unusual to say the least. Um, anyway, let's concentrate on, first of all, Ruffy, um, any great surprises for you in the quarter-final ties in the via play League Cup? No, no, I, I, I'm trying to remember now, I think I went for Hearts, didn't I, last week uh, to get there because they'd been in semi-finals uh, quite regular, but uh, it's amazing that two of the managers are there, the two of the managers that the people over there have been saying are on a sticky wicket. Yeah, absolutely. And now they're in a the semi-final. Yeah, <laughs> I think the other great thing about it is everybody was hoping that, uh, you know, well, <clears throat> a lot of people were wondering, are Hearts and Hibs going to be drawn together? at the semi-final stage after their heroics in midweek. Um, was there any surprises for you? No, no surprises. I think Hearts were the the ones that, that... That was a difficult game away to Kelly. But to get there, and then obviously Rangers getting there, they meet each other. Um, it's been a pretty lucky place, semi-finals at Hamden for Hearts, and the, the, the unlucky bit has been the, the final. So if they go and um, beat Rangers, they've got to be clear favourites for me to... to Win it. Yeah, um, and I think that's the key to it is just maybe Tam them having the belief that one of them can take the scalp of, of Rangers. It's, it's a really good opportunity, although everybody you talk to thinks Rangers have to win this um, for Michael Beale. I mean, they're, they're favourites anyway, but he has to win it because of his job. Yeah, I think so. I think that's that, that's pretty, you know, pretty clear that he's got to win the, the League Cup. I think he's going to be under massive pressure. You know, talking about Hibs, I was glad they never got hurts. You know, Hearts have spanked Hibs every time in the semi-final for about the last 10, 15 years. So I'm quite happy that Hibs stayed away, uh, stayed away for Hearts and, and got Aberdeen. But listen, I think it's wide open. I think <coughs> if listen, if, if Rangers beat Hearts, they'll be they'll be big favourites in the final. But I think all four teams are capable of winning it, no doubt about it. Yeah, and uh, Alec Lowry <coughs> certainly will be a happier man because it's, he's been a bit part player on loan uh, okay. with Hearts, Ruffy, but he took his goal well. Yeah, he certainly did. A wee bit of class inside the box, kept his head, you know, and, you know, stuck it quite well away from everybody there. <clears throat> but again, it opens that stupid rule that I keep thinking about it. Uh, players in loan can't play against the teams that they're registered. It's not fair on a player. You know, if he's not good enough to play in your first team, then why shouldn't he be good enough to play in the other team? You know, I know the consequences of him playing and scoring a winner and all that carry on, but... The, the loan system needs to be looked at, really. Yeah, um, the fans are not too happy, though. Ruffy, I'll come to you because you're always great when it comes to fans upset with boards. Um, but <laughs> they unfurled a banner. Um, maybe they didn't quite get the grammar correct on it, um, but the sentiment was there. Uh, they reckon they are you know, a major contributor to the funds that are available to Hearts. Uh, they're not too happy with the way the board is running it, and they say they deserve better. Um, should Hearts at this moment be under pressure because of the way the clubs run? I, 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 I'm, I'm a little bit amazed at that. It's early in the season. Yeah, well, again, I'm no privy to what happens behind the scenes at Hearts, but certainly with Anne Budge and the other boy who have been putting millions into the club, you know, and other people as well. I know the Hearts supporters have done tremendously well right from the start with the administration. I think they've all contributed monthly. Uh, I, I thought there was actually a couple of fans on the board at some level so but obviously they're not happy with some of the decisions that are getting made yeah i mean it, listen it, it's one of the major successes of hearts 
is the fact that they have fans who make a you know a monthly contribution. Uh, the Foundation of Hearts has been a huge success for that club. Um, but the one thing I would say is, fans are great. Fans on the board, fine if you want that. If they want a major say, you know. But you still need major investors, Lee, if you are going to go through the pitfalls that you know you get in Scottish football from time to time. You need people that can provide that safety net. Yeah, I think, firstly, the Foundation of Hearts has been amazing. And so many thousands of people's contributing um, monthly. And I think they've got representation on the board, fans rep representation <coughs> on the board. Um, regarding the banner, are the f I, 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 don't, I don't know why, put it that way. Like, Robbie Nielsen comes in, Recently, there's a plane going over, or, or he was in and they wanted them out. It was a yep. plane going over, um, get Nielsen out, whatever it was, and it was me driving, <laughs> flying the plane. <laughs> 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 it was me. But it's they, they never seem to be happy, um, and it doesn't really help the manager Stephen A. Smith or the players when there's this turn and throwing and. I think it needs to get sorted, but it's how how do you get it sorted? How do you do it? Um, yeah. Oh well. Well, the, the the answer from the fans is <coughs> they, they they want better results. They'll be unhappy with some of the players. And they'll be unhappy with the manager. I mean, some of them are not overly enamoured with the the way it was all set up to start with. But Stevie Naismith's got a good, you know, he's he's got certainly a good coaching reputation. He certainly was a good player. Mm -hmm. um, has he got enough? to show this season to get them first of all above Hibs and secondary into position where Hearts think they should be third. That's the early doors, there's only about six games we've played Peter, uh, you know Hearts, you know previous seasons finished fourth and then for obviously finished third the season before, had a great run in Europe you know and, uh, and got all the money that came from that. I think the expectation levels at Hearts went up, you know I think when, when they finished third and they got that automatic money you know automatic group stage for European football I think the, the Hearts fans thought right we can kick on here and now be the actual <coughs> third, you know, third best team, and, and kick on and try and get closer to Celtic Rangers. There's a lot of chat about that. It hasn't happened. The start of this season, it hasn't happened at all. They're sitting, you know, at the bottom end of the table, and you know, listen, it's it's just one of those things where expectations at Hearts are huge. You know, expectations at Hibs are huge. Hibs have already sacked their manager. You know, I think <coughs> if, if Hearts hadn't won during the week, I think there'd been there'd been shouts for Naismith to get to get sacked as well. So, but that's just. At Hibs and Hearts, you've got to win, you've got to be third, you've got to be third, you've got to be challenging for trophies and, and competing with Old Firm. If you're not, unfortunately, they're going to be calls for, your, for the manager's head. It's just the way it is in Edinburgh. But there's the same complaints at Rangers and Celtic. Their supporters don't think they've kicked on enough. You know, so, I mean, where, where do you want to kick on to? You is know, that the what, demands? What are the expect expectations? Well, what just the man in says, I never saw the banner. What did the banner say? Uh, the banner itself, um, not quite grammatically correct, it said funded by fans, ran by clowns, we deserve better. Um, Is that towards the board though? Yeah. Or do you think that's do you think that's towards the board or do you think that's directly towards the manager? Because I see that towards more the board. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. and yeah. budge. Yeah. And budge I think was the main yeah, they've right. not started well, <coughs> sorry, they've not started no. well. If I, could just, uh, if I could just jump in there, you, you know, Hearts and Hibs, it's early days, um, but, <coughs> you know, people get slightly miffed. Hearts are now looking at a semi-final with a chance to get into the final. Um, Celtic fans, I mean, Brendan Rodgers had a little snipe at someone and said, you know, we're top of the table. Mm -hmm. You know, some, some team in turmoil if we're top of the table, you know. Mm -hmm. I, I, I don't know any Celtic fans who are not happy at the moment Ruffy I mean they've lost well, they've I'm lost the Feyenoord they were out of the League yeah. Cup but it's a slow transition for them they're probably not happy <coughs> with the signings that's yeah the that's what I'm saying yeah. the, the, some of the Celtic supporters keep saying well we're not any better off we're not got a better team than what we had last year yeah so that's not an improvement you know it's okay saying yeah we're top of the league and all that you, eventually fans will settle down when you start I don't think they'll settle things. I don't think they'll set. I think where their anger <laughs> will start to increase is when they don't get points in the Champions League. That's when I think it's going to kick That'll in. That'll be roughly. an interesting one because I thought that had been the case the last time when they ended up was at one point. I thought there would have been a, have been a mass hysteria there, but the the PR that was there, you know, got the supporters to buy into the way they were playing. They weren't really sitting behind the ball. They were giving it a go in every game, and they got away with it, with that. But I don't know if it'll be the same this time. I, I really can't see them getting beat. 
in this group getting beat six and seven. I, I really can't. But no. when they were getting beat six and seven, I thought there would have been some kind of fan of rest. Can you see them winning a game? Yeah, I can. I can see them winning uh, the Feyenoord one. You know, they, they looked a good quality side, but you've got to win your home games. I, I always think we talk, I've said it every year, I think we talk up some teams too much. But when you get them at home, you've always got a chance. Mm. If if all your players turn up on the night, oh, that's that's your yeah, yeah, they, They've just got a, a win last week. They were on a back of three or four defeats as well. So they're in a group. We're not two of the big boys. Mm. They're, they're in a group of teams who will will not get any further once they get out. Yeah. Okay. I, I think their best chance of points is against Feyenoord. But we're jumping the gun <coughs> here. Um, I think the biggest problem for for a lot of Celtic fans was you know the anger of not signing those blue chip players that they thought were going to be coming in when you think about the money that Celtic have managed to put in the bank and then with a couple of players going out I think that's the first part part of the anger getting knocked out in the League Cup didn't help them either no I think when Brendan Rodgers comes back as a manager I think the Celtic fans are rubbing their hands thinking right he's, he's come back for one reason we're going to back him heavily I think when you look at the, the signings, you know, I think that the Celtic supporters maybe were expecting a, a seven, eight million pound player, ten million maybe, pushing the boat out for, for, for so. Brendan Rodgers to come back. I think so. Ten Peter. million. Well, much to pay for Carter Vickers. Seven or eight. Six. Six. Jota. I think Six or seven. The, I think the they, they, and Brendan Rodgers the wasn't there. Fans that, that I talk about one in particular. Um a way back. And you tell me who the manager was. Who was the manager when Celtic were spending six million without batting an eyelid? Matt O'Neill. Mm -hmm. You know, six million for Lenny, six million for Sutton, six million for Hartson. Yeah. You know, the six millions were flying about. How many years ago was up here? Twenty. Twenty years ago. You know, yeah. but that the, the the psychology seems to be, we don't need to spend six million now. We, we'll just buy a young player at two or three, and we'll make seven or eight million. But you need I think, the the are, the I think the supporters, Celtic supporters are a bit fed up with that now. But how much did they get for Jota? Never mind well, spending. Well, 13 and a half and they spent six and a half to buy him on a per after the, the loan, yeah. they had an option. I, I'm, I'm with him and when Brendan came in I was expecting mm. a big, big name signing and it didn't, it's not... To the tune of 10 million. Big. Mm -hmm. High single figures at least, no? Yeah, That's what I, I, must admit, I, I must admit, I was. I, I thought they might push the board out for, for you know a five or a six million again, roughly two or three of them of quality. But it, well, it you know, I'm sure there's an argument somewhere along the line from someone within the club to suggest you know they've re-signed certain players, but they re-signed certain players that all failed in Europe last year. Yeah, but I think the board have issued a statement saying, look, uh, we might have seventy million, but we're we're safeguarding for no being in the Champions League, and we're safeguarding for. Barrafield, and they're, they're saying the right things, but at the end yeah. of the day, supporters want success. They want to pay their money, their Champions League money, and they want to go along and see it get get a decent right. run. They want to see their team playing well. Yeah. And I mean, we're just sorry, Peter. Have Celtic spent more this summer than they did last summer with Ange? Did Ange spend more money last summer? Uh, the answer to that is, I, I I would suggest to you that Ange probably spent more money last summer. Yeah. I didn't think that would be possible. I think Brendan would have come in and spent that's exactly 20, where I am. 20, yeah. 25, 30 million on players. Hasn't materialised. I think Jota's sale, obviously there's a, a percentage of it has gone to Benfica as well, but they certainly managed to balance the books pretty well. Um, but listen, uh, they're at the top of the table. I must admit, I've, I'm being bold about it all. I don't see anybody replacing them at the top of the table from now until the end. I think they'll still <coughs> win it clear by 10 points. Um, because of the resources they've got, the ability to spend even more money in the January window, and, and I think the squad and the depth of it is such, and of course the fact is that the overriding one here is I think he's a better coach than Michael Beale. Um, I think Michael Beale is in the early stages of trying, still trying to prove himself at this club, with the Rangers fans still to be convinced, and I think Brendan Rodgers is way, way above you know, well, he's got more experience. Yeah, he's managed more games. He's won more trophies. He's. I don't think that can really be argued. Yeah. Um, at all, uh, when you see, he nearly won the, the Premier League. I know you get nothing in football for a nearly, but he, he nearly won um, the Premier League with Liverpool. He won a cup with Leicester. Didn't yeah, he? yeah. So he's, he's doing it in different different countries. He's, yeah. Uh, uh, at a very, very high standard. And so. that puts the pressure on someone who is 
After all, an inexperienced manager trying to buy himself some time, and he is buying himself time here, because you've got Rangers fans that want him out already, Lee. There's fans of unrest, just like Hearts, Hibs were before the new manager, <clears throat> and Celtic were probably before a ball was kicked, with regarding who we're bringing in. I think that's the standard that big clubs, big clubs demand success. Mm. Um, but regarding Rangers, I just think like the four clean sheets I've had in the last four games, and there's still a majority of the fans really not happy. Yeah, and it tells its own story, sorry. Yeah, it does actually, but they're in the semi finals. Uh, you've got to get a sense of perspective <clears> on this. Um, who'd have thought, Ruffy, if you in 1971, if I'd met you in a street, you know, and said, by the way, Ruffy, you know, 30, 40 years from now, people will be calling for managers to get sacked after six and seven games. You'd never believe it, would you? No, you wouldn't, you know, but that's the way it is. It's, uh, fans are very, very more vocal now than what they used to be. Yeah. They actually call the shots at some stages, you know, probably putting pressure on boards and and making them make decisions very, very early. But uh, there is more of a say, you know, you've just seen, we just spoke about it at Hearts, you know, and I'm sure every club supporters would want a large say in where the way, which direction the club's gone. Yeah, and of course the other thing that a lot of the guys <laughs> won't know is if I'd said that to you in 1971, you would have said, look, you're six years of age, get out of my way. <laughs> <laughs> what do you know about football? Yeah. So I'll pick up my three hundred pound bonus. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, yeah. God, good that you remember it. Um, here's a man who doesn't remember all his bonuses. Uh, Lee uh, Rangers comfortable in the end against Livingston, but yet again a fair bit of consternation over Willie Collum and the VAR, which uh, I think provided us with that moment. Was it a push? Or was it not a push? I think. Well, obviously, I watched the game, and as soon as I seen it, I thought foul. And then I seen the replay and I thought, foul again. Yeah. Um, that's my opinion of what happened. Yeah. I think they ended up convincing winners, but that is a big turning point again. Yeah. Obviously. Well, Willie Collum clearly um, angered, I think, more than a few Levy fans and David Martindale, well, unhappy, not only with the manager, but the V, not only with the ref, the VAR as well, not to actually pull it back. Uh, and as if to compound his misery, Livingston got a bill for VAR this month. Them boys came in there all the day for VAR. It's above six figures, a good bat above six figures. And then you get these decisions that are, you're hoping that VAR's going to make the correct decision or help to make the correct decision. I just... I think that circumstances that have been beneficial if Willie had been asked to go and look at the monitor and see if the on pitch referee watches the technology and says, look, it's it's not a foul, you probably take it a wee bit more on the chin. Yeah, absolutely. Everybody's had their say on it, but the upshot of it all is <coughs> here is the draw for the Viaplay League Cup semi final is Hibs against Aberdeen and Hearts against Rangers. 4th and 5th of November for these two semi-final ties. Where's your money, Tom? Hibs. We said it, we said it before last week, we did. Yeah. We said Hibs. And I think they've got a great draw. I think that's a perfect draw for them. Staying away for Rangers, they've got a terrible record at hand against Hearts. Aberdeen's a great draw. I fancy Hibs to beat Aberdeen in the semi-final, then anything can happen in a final, so I'm going to stick with Hibs. Hibs to go through to beat Aberdeen, I think they're... They're turning the corner, they're looking a threat, uh, they're unbeaten under Montgomery, he's going to youth, I definitely think they'll have too much for Aberdeen, and in the other game I think that'll be really, really tight, unless one of the teams for now, in November the 4th or 5th, starts getting a wee bit of momentum, so I'll go for Rangers, mm -hmm. obviously, yep. but I think that'll be a real, <coughs> real tight game. Rangers Aberdeen for me, Ruffy, in the final, what about you? Uh, probably Rangers Hibs for me. Yeah. You know, I think uh, the last one, or a couple of ones I would go over, something the Hibs supporters will remember, so maybe the same again. Yeah. What are you talking about in riddles here? <laughs> <laughs> I don't have a clue. You're You're David Gray. What? <laughs> you know him, David Gray, remember did, him? He's done your you Chinese did? testimony dinner a couple of weeks, so remember him? Yep, absolutely. Um, <laughs> Why do you think Aberdeen? Because <laughs> he's a heart he's <laughs> sympathiser. <laughs> <laughs> and Ann Budge's pocket. 
<laughs> I can funny you say that when, when, uh, when I did David Guy's testimony. <laughs> then uh, Joan Yeo came up and uh, and uh, I was talking to him about all the, uh, you know, do you, do you, are you able to block out the noises? He says, yeah, it's mostly from you. <laughs> I thought, thanks, Joe. Um, I don't know. I, I just I sense from Aberdeen that they are starting to kick in where I thought they would be. Um, it, it was a tough game in the midweek, but they, they've got a bit about them. I like the boy Clarkson. Um, Mioski's a goal scorer. Um, if you get a wee bit of experience, I think their best player in the team is Shinny because he is so calm. When it got really frenetic and it, and it suited Ross County to mix it up, Shinny always was able to just slowly take the heat out of the game yeah. and, and, and add a wee calming influence. And, and I know it sounds really outrageous to suggest that making simple passes just to calm everybody down, but he picked the ball up off the back line, take the pressure off them. He'd pick the ball up in the middle with two or three, get it out wide, and he just kept the whole thing. He was, he was like a Callum McGregor for Aberdeen. Yeah, good enough for me. Yeah, so... Listen, hey, it's all about opinions. I'll probably pick our, our picks and none. What do I know? Um, Scottish Premier fixtures this weekend to look forward to. Six on the Saturday. No televised game. First time. I think there's only very few countries actually have gone through a weekend where one of their games is not at least the televised. getting cancelled for Sky. So, uh, well, exactly. It's a strange one. Motherwell against Celtic. And we all know um, that Brendan has been saying slowly but surely that he feels as if uh, the, the team are starting to get used to what he wants from them, the demands. And he did say any of them that don't actually shape up to the way he wants them to play, uh, they won't be there. Um, and he reckons, as he said at the press conference this week, that they're taking a huge step in the right direction the way they are going now. This is what he had to say. Um, I think the team have taken a really big mental step forward and you see that now in how they're performing, the determination, the intensity, the quality starting to move forward to the levels I wanted to get to. My priority in my career has always been about the quality of our football and that's quality of football to win games and we're starting to see that now. Tam? I think the, the result in the performance against Livingston has really, I think, encouraged a lot of Celtic fans that they're on the right track now. I think that uh, going down to 10 men you know, at Livingston, tough ground to go and get a result. You know, ten men have you got? Have, you know, have you got the grit and the determination and the, and the physicality to see that game out? And they won the game in a canter, three nothing. Played really well. Best I'd seen Celtic this season. <coughs> I thought before Joe Hart threw the, the free kick in at Feyenoord, I thought they played really well as well. I thought they played well. I thought they looked a threat going forward against a good team. And um, the sending off obviously changes the game as well. So, nah, I, I, I think that Celtic are slowly but surely starting to click. I didn't think they started the season particularly well, but I think Brendan's philosophy is now starting to seep into that side and that squad. And, uh, you know, I thought that, that result and that performance against Livingston was, was a big pointer for me. Mm, Motherwell manager Stuart Kettlewell agrees with you wholeheartedly on the way Celtic are starting to perform. I think we're I think we're uh, I think we're going to face a team that's starting to, to really click into gear. Obviously, um, some new faces in their side, um, a new manager, but a manager that obviously knows what the football club's all about and knows what it's like to to taste success. Um, so I expect them to be really getting up uh, up into gear and uh, they'll carry a major major threat. Yeah, it didn't quite work out for Motherwell against Rangers. Is it going to be a similar outcome against Celtic, Ruffy? I think it'll be a hard one uh, for Motherwell, you know, that uh, I think we spoke about it last week here. Yeah. They've had a right good start to the season, but there's some stage of the season where it's not going to go all right. And I think it's just starting to materialise now. I think Celtic will go there. I I'm still a wee bit anxious about the Celtic defence. You know, they're obviously the two centre-halves. You know, I don't think they're the finished article yet. Even Maida, Wade and Keogh go in the middle, the other side, there's nothing there just now. And the only good thing about for Celtic is they've got three or four players that they've brought in that we've not seen yet. You know, we don't know the quality of the boy from Benfica, they were all raving about him, so that can only be a plus. But I still think Celtic would be too good uh, to go there and not lose the game. What have you predicted? I've predicted 2 nothing Celtic. Mm -hmm. Lee? Motherwell outstanding at Ibrox last weekend, but couldn't get the goal to get a draw. Difficult game, home game. I'm going to go Celtic 1-0, pretty tight. Okay. Celtic 3-0, easy. <sighs>
Okay, I've got 3-1 <coughs> Celtic in that one. Um, just interestingly enough, though, the one little comment that came out that Brendan Rodgers said he personally blocked the sale of Matt O'Reilly to Leeds United for £10 million. Um, This is obviously saying that he didn't want <coughs> to lose, uh, you know, O'Reilly off the back of Jota and Starfelt heading out. That's a rather worrying situation, isn't it? When you bear in mind what they'd signed, that they were willing to let him go as well. Yeah, but I think he thinks a lot of him. You know, I think he thinks he's got uh, another few gears to go yet. I think, uh, obviously, this season he's been outstanding, you know, getting in the box, scoring goals. Big, big player. Callum McGregor hasn't hit, you know, his full potential yet. And I think O'Reilly's taking a bit of pressure off him uh, by putting in the performances. So Celtic obviously don't need the £10 million. You know, There might have been a year when they would have taken it, but this year in particular, maybe it's Brendan Rodgers just say, making a statement saying, well, you haven't given me much money to spend, so I'm not going to lose one of my better players. Yeah, OK. Uh, Rangers against Aberdeen, and suddenly the uh, previous matches is starting to look a lot healthier uh, for <laughs> Rangers. And I think the general consensus, which is not really kind of a gathering any pace among the supporters, but the general feeling is it's now his team he's building it, you got to give him time. So if you look at what he's done in the last four games, he's produced the wins and they haven't lost any goals. Exactly, it's, that, that's a big point. Um, not conceded, won the last four, whatever it is, uh, through the semi-final, but you still get a majority of the fans that uh, are quite vocal about not being happy. That Tomorrow's a big, big game. For, for Rangers, even though they're at home, Aberdeen turning the corner slightly, Rangers, Roof, Raskin, Cantwell, Matondo, all missing. Um, difficult game, really difficult game. Yeah, um, here's Adam Biddy who was out there to find out what the Rangers <coughs> boss had to say. Rangers take on Aberdeen at Ibrox tomorrow, but they will be without Kemar Roof. The forward joins an extensive list of injured absentees. It includes Todd Cantwell, Nico Raskin, Tom Lawrence, Kieran Dowell, Rabbi Matondo, Danilo and now Roof himself. With the manager Michael Beale confirming that the forward will miss this weekend's game due to a scan on a groin injury. No, listen, until we get the news back from the scan, we don't know really what we're dealing with. Um, obviously, it's disappointing for Kamar because he came back into the team and did so well until the other night. And uh, listen, this is hope. It's nothing too serious and he'll be available uh, in the short term rather than the long term. Rangers have won their last four matches in a row without conceding a single goal, but there's still been some criticism from parts of the Rangers' support over the level of performance, something that some are signing. Sam Lammers fully understands. Yeah, I, I knew it already before I came here because, yeah, Rangers should win every game, so if it's not the case, then it's normal that, uh, yeah, that you hear rumours from the outside or, like, you hear uh, uh, some negativity, but... Like I said, the only thing is what we can do as a team is be honest to each other in the uh, in the time we have here and look uh, what we can improve. I think we did it really well uh, last week and now there's another good big game ahead of us. Lee, as a, as a former player, are you seeing signs that there's you know, a change in, uh, in the way they're playing or an improvement in the way they're playing or is there still a, a fair bit to go? I'm seeing signs of a bit of togetherness. Uh, watched the the Betis game, and although they didn't start the game well, I thought defensively, as a unit, second half that they they were effective. They created some chances. They should have scored. So there is signs there, but I I don't think they've fully turned the corner on fluent <coughs> football yet. I I don't think they've. Um, they've shown fluent football um, since probably the, the start of the season but that can be down to nine signings coming in and a lot of different things going on. Yeah, uh, strangely enough I, I, I've watched Aberdeen, I watched them in midweek uh, as well. There are signs that they're starting to, to click in places but <clears throat> they could all come crashing down again. I don't think it will. I think I need to get something. <coughs> yeah. Yeah, I do. I, I, I just think that this is the game that Rangers. I think that Beal's going to trip up. I think that Aberdeen have took a lot of confidence from that game in Germany against Eintracht Frankfurt. They lost the game, but they put in a fantastic performance against a top team. They scored over there. They lost it narrowly. They've come back to Hammer County, you know, at home, and then they've beat them up there again. 
during the week in the Cup and the semi-finals, I think they're, they're starting to click, they're starting, they're starting to get confidence and I think they'll go there and have a right go at Rangers and uh, I fancy Aberdeen to get something, I'm going to go for a draw in this game and I think the pressure will be back, bang on Michael Beale back on Monday, Monday morning. Here's what Barry Robson had to say about the game. Yeah, it has been. I think um, the season's been a wee bit up and down for us, but um, I think we've started to move and started to motor a wee bit now. And um, we, we, the last week that we've had has been has been really productive. Although we never won over in Germany, it was still a, a very very good performance um, in the last two games. Um, so we were actually <clears throat> picking up some points in the league, and we, and we get ourselves a trip to Hamden. So um, yeah, this, the, we, we, we're in a um, we're in a, a place where we're, we're, we're moving and we're moving in the right direction. Yeah, uh, and every yeah. manager that, that has made it to the semi-final has tried to highlight, highlight that and their league position and what they're doing. Yeah, they have improved. There's no doubt about that. I think Rangers are getting them possibly at the wrong time. But I, I said last week, just by looking at the game, and I know Lee's saying they've, they've not really put in a... A 70, 80 minute, 90 minute shift yet, but they're still winning games. And I said last week that somebody's going to get thumped at a particular time. And I know it was only 1 nothing against Motherwell, and Motherwell did particularly well, but the star man in the Motherwell side was the goalie, Kelly. If it hadn't been for Kelly, it could have been three or four, you know. So I think Rangers are just just a wee bit all right. They took four off of, of Livingston, but I think they're just a wee bit away from giving somebody a good 3 nothing. Yeah. And I think it's going to be tomorrow. Oh, you're going for three nothing? I went for two. <laughs> <laughs> yep. <laughs> a comfortable two or an edgy, edgy no, two? Comfortable. <laughs> I've got uh, Rangers mm -hmm. two, edge at two one. <clears throat> Rangers three one. Three one. Uh, one each. One each, okay. Um, <clears throat> just before we move on to the next game, uh, I think a special mention here to. Uh, Jim uh, Forrest, who obviously, um, uh, Jim Forrest died at the age of 79 and I think a lot of Rangers fans will look back on his time at the club with great fondness uh, from everybody on the football show, our thoughts with his family and his friends. 79 years of age, five Scotland caps and Lee, 145 goals in 163 games for Rangers. I know a certain vintage of Rangers fan who really um, 145 goals in 163 games yeah yeah uh, and, and he helped Aberdeen win the 1970 Scottish Cup as well um, yeah. you know before you won it he put his he put his time in for Rangers oh he certainly did especially with the with, with the goal return and what a what a career he's had um, I'm a little bit too young to, to fully remember him but I know my dad uh, remembers him Ruffy, you remember him? Yeah, I, I thought a good. Uh, I, I read an article. Obviously, him and uh, Big George McLean were the scapegoats for getting beat by Berwick Rangers, and uh, they never played again. I think uh, Scott Simon just dropped him right after that game, and it hurt him badly. Uh, but in the article that he wrote, he said he would never ever say a bad word against Rangers, and it must have hurt him that day, you know. But obviously, with the the career that he had. Yeah, OK. Um, our thoughts with uh, Jim Forrest's family and <coughs> friends at this very sad time of his passing. Uh, let's move on to Ross County against Hearts. And uh, after the game, of course, uh, Malky Mackay, very unhappy. John Beaton was the referee. There were <laughs> yellow cards flying about, tasty tackles, some decisions which left uh, the manager bemused. And I think the Ross County boss really unhappy with the process of making complaints about referees and VAR decisions. As a manager down in England, um, there is a, um, an official process in terms of uh, your um, comment box on the officials in the evening. Um, for some reason we don't have that in Scotland. Um, Crawford prefers um, if there's something you wish to talk about um, to give them a call. Um, I suppose that makes it unofficial, uh, rather than than document what you what you perceive on the evening. Yeah, this um, obviously takes me back to uh, something that Malky talked about at great length in that game, and it's something which I think you know I read a book by um, Matthew Syed called Black Box Thinking, which is just basically about 
the differences between the aviation industry and how they share information and obviously uh, how they deal with um, tragedy or complaints or technology to make things better. Um, whereas the book is all about how the health industry does not share information and they try and protect their own environment to avoid lawsuits, you name it. Mm. Uh, it was a very interesting read and and it goes along the same lines of what Malky was talking about there, which is basically as soon as there's somebody having a go at an establishment, they close ranks mm. and that you know and they back each other to the hilt and they won't take the criticism and they don't want to be held responsible or culpable for something that's gone wrong. And I think Malky's cry out here is listen, there has to be a process similar to England where people communicate with each other and try and rectify the problems and, and have a an official channel where they don't have to occasionally call up Crawford Allen to make their case, they have to put it out there as a for, for the whole church to deal with. It's got to be more transparency, Peter, within Scottish football. I think it would start with referees coming out after the game and, and explaining decisions. I really do. And I know I, I don't think the SFA will ever go down that road. But I think it would be great, firstly, the referees <coughs> to explain why they gave a decision and why why that why it happened. And secondly, maybe getting referees mic'd up or officials mic'd up. You know, it's happened in other countries where you can hear everything that happens in rugby. You know, and uh, I think something like that would would take away all this, you know, paranoia probably in terms of managers and fans, where you actually get to listen to what they're saying during the game, during the game and after the game, they explain a decision during the game, they explain a decision, and I think that's got to come sometime in the future, and I think that would help everyone uh, be more transparent. Yeah. Okay. Um, as far as the Hearts camp are concerned, we've already uh, discussed. Uh, the displeasure from the Hearts supporters. Um, they're in the semi-finals uh, and they've got a chance to climb the table if they can get a win over Ross County and Patrick Mullen was out there to find out what the Hearts manager was talking about today. I'm here at the Hearts training centre this afternoon speaking to Stephen Naismith as his side are preparing to take on Ross County. They'll travel up to Dingwall tomorrow afternoon to take on a side they beat 6-1 last time out but Naismith is expecting a completely different challenge tomorrow afternoon. I think it'll be a totally different game. The, the, the way they played that that day and, and how they've been setting up recently is different. Um, we've obviously changed a few players and, and our squad's a bit different. Um, we have got a decent record up north, um, but it'll be a tough game. M most games every week for their, for their own reasons are tough um, and and it's about us trying to stick to the game plan to, to one, start the game fast and, and, and on the front foot and then create and take chances when, when they come along. And it's a special day for young Aidan Denholm. The 19-year-old has signed a new contract at Hearts, keeping him at the club until 2026. He's a local lad who grew up in Kerstofen and he's absolutely delighted to extend his stay. Well, I'm a Hearts fan, so probably uh, probably be it's like a dream come true, really. But uh, I signed here when I was eight. Uh, I went through the, the academies and kept going and kept going. And then uh, it was really, I signed my first full-time deal at 16. Uh, and then from there just kept going and kept going and then uh, now signing that deal to 2026 is a wee bit like jeez like it's not actually kicked in yet because it's a wee bit like it just got obviously announced today but yeah, I'm just buzzing I'm delighted yeah we always like to see that and then you hope that he can somehow break into the side and, and make an impression <clears throat> yes it's, it's quite refreshing watching his interview there he's been doing training with the first team uh, quite often and was last season bubbly character uh, tremendous attitude and I think you can just tell he's just excited to be in and round about the first team so it just shows you that hearts are are, are building for the future I like to see you know people mm -hmm. that the fans can relate to uh, you know homegrown players as well we absolutely embrace foreign players who come in and enhance our game roughly it's fantastic but I think there's a greater affinity if you've got you know, as the, the fans chant, one of our own yeah. um, who supports the club and understands, you know, the whole history and what it means. Yeah, it's great, it's great. I'm saying he's been there for his eight, you know, and he's come through and, and hang on in there. And you think now, and I don't know if all teams do, Patrick Thistle, we did it uh, in the, the programmes before the games. If there was a player there, there was a, an A for Academy beside him. And I think the fans really appreciated that, that they saw that the, the academy players were coming through, some in the first team, some on the bench or whatever, but I think every club and every supporter wants to see a young boy who's given up everything for a team he probably comes through the area and then they get in the first team.
Yeah, absolutely. Although I, I, I will counter that by saying there's been more than a few foreign players who've come in and absolutely embraced clubs and, and just almost you would think they were born here as well when they when they embraced them. I mean, yeah, well, in terms of myself, you know, in terms of guys I played with, played against, you know, Russell Latape at Hibs, uh, Frank Sosie at Hibs. You don't mind guys, you, you mentioned it earlier, you don't mind guys that come in and actually make the product, make the league better, you know, and yeah. improve young players and you can learn off and they're good professionals. Other guys just come in that are journeymen, you know, you sign, you know, and they're, they're not good enough. I think that kind of blocks the pathway sometimes of young kids coming through. So, no, I totally agree. I think if you're a good foreign player and you enhance the league, then we're all for it here. Hibs against Dundee. Hibs starting to play quicker passing. Nick <laughs> slowly but surely trying to work his magic. Yep, started really well, Peter. I think that uh, obviously I was a wee bit sceptical of him coming in at first and uh, he's four points out of six in the league in the semi-final. Hibs are scoring goals again, which I think is important. Um, he made a triple substitution the other night at 2-1 and then St Murn scored straight away to make it two each and I was sitting watching it going, I'm not sure about that change. And then he put Boyle through the middle and he scored the two goals. So he's every decision he's making is, is going well for him as, as, as well just at the minute. So started really, really strongly. I fancy that we beat Dundee who I think have started pretty well as well. But I just think Hibs just look really good going forward at the minute. I think they've got goals in them. Uh, if he plays Lafondra, Venti's starting to score goals. He's shown why Hibs paid a lot of money for him. You know, he's got Deutsch can be coming off the bench. He's got Boyle who scored a couple the other night. So all of a sudden, uh, Eli Johan, he's got lots of options in that forward area. And I think that Hibs have too much firepower for Dundee. Yeah, um, Ruffy and I had a cup and we just took a paper, a little slip of paper out each and uh, I had, he'll call for his head end of October. Because um, you know what you to keep like. one in, needs to keep one in. Yeah, there you yeah, are. I'm quite hard to please. <laughs> yeah, you say that. Uh, we only have to look at that column going up and down like a yo-yo. Um, if you could hold an opinion, Ruffy, that's what we were saying to each other. Um, but Dundee, ninth, one win from six league games. But off the back of that, you know, you get a good draw last week against Kelly. Oh, great, a great one, result right? at the end, you know, obviously getting down to 10 men and, you know, seeing it out. I, I think their home form will be the one that will, if they are going to survive, that's where they'll pick up points. I can't see them picking up many points away from home and Tam's just summed up there why I think Hibs are going to win tomorrow. Four goals, you know, the fans are going to turn up, there's going to be about 17,000 there, they're all right behind the team, there's no moaning or groaning or anything like going on. Players are looking forward to the game, they're going into the game with confidence. So only one winner for me. That's yeah. Hibs. What have you got? I've got two 0 Yeah. Hibs three 0 Two one. Three one. Okay. Kilmarnock against St Mirren. Let's find out what's happening down at Rugby Park. Alison McConnell is there. Kilmarnock manager Derek McInnes will welcome St Mirren to Rugby Park tomorrow afternoon as both sides seek to banish the memory of their midweek via play League Cup defeats. Hearts, of course, had the better of Kilmarnock on Tuesday evening at Tynecastle with McInnes now eager just to see his side focus on domestic league matters. St Mern were a reference to us at the start of the season in terms of, you know, I think it was 12 points, the difference between us and them. Um, uh, the split last season, even though they were a team that we managed, never lost to St Mern last year, but we, we looked at them and a lot of things that they they did right. Um, and they've continued that, obviously, at the start of this campaign. So, well, Steve has put that squad together over the last couple of years, and you can see the benefit of that. Um, but I do think for a lot of clubs, including ourselves, you know, it shows what can be done. Uh, and we're certainly working towards that. We believe we can be that team going forward. How quickly we can get there will remain to be seen, but we want to try and be that team um, as quickly as possible. And McInnes has also revealed that St Mirren were one of the focal points for Kilmarnock as they set out their aims and ambitions at the start of the campaign. There were 12 points that separated the sides at the end of last season, with McInnes confident that his side can make up that gap this term. Most important thing, bouncing back hopefully tomorrow. Eh? And against another team who started the season well, but I've had the disappointment as well. Stephen's the same. He'll be, he'll be another one who'd have thought they had the team and the performance to get to a semi-final the other night. Um, so we're both coming off the back of um, having high expectations for Celtic to get to Hamden and, and um, having to deal with the defeat. And now we just try and both try and go and win a game of football tomorrow. Yeah, he'll be hurting after midweek because he genuinely wanted to get into at least a semi and possibly the final. I think deep down he thought he'd had a right good chance during the week. Um, after being at home, beating Rangers at home, 
I, th- I think well, I spoke to him after the game and he was he was gutted with it with the manner of the the goal and um, another last minute goal like the week before against Dundee. So this this is a big game for Derek and the club tomorrow. But again, it's two two contrasting teams. Uh, Kilmarnock will um, look to, to to get the ball to Vassell as quickly as possible, and, and obviously St Mern <coughs> will play the way they play. So. I, th- I think it'll be a really, really tight game tomorrow. But I'm going to stick my neck in a line and say... No, no. No, no. Okay. <laughs> no, no. Have we ever had a no, no? I don't yeah. think you have. I've got, I've got one coming up the next game. <laughs> <laughs> I think it may be a time for us to send you down here then, if it is a nil, nil. Um, of course, uh, St Mirren will be smarting from that midweek defeat. Has he finally brushed it off? Let's find out. Adam Binney was speaking to Stephen Robinson. St Mirren will be hoping to bounce back from Wednesday's via play cup defeat to Hibernian when they return to league action to face Kilmarnock at Rugby Park on Saturday. Stephen Robinson will be hoping that his side can continue their fantastic league form that saw them make their best start to a league campaign since 1948. Luck didn't go our way. We, we, we probably beat ourselves a little bit more than him's beating us. And that's not you know, no um, disrespect to him. Say, you know, Martin Boyle is the difference between the two teams with his goals. But um, there's a lot of good stuff. Um, and... As I say, we're not going to get too down about it. It's an opportunity missed. It's in the bin now. We moved on. Um, we spoke about it as a group. And, you know, we have to remember this is the best start in St Mirren for St Mirren for 75 years. So, you know, there certainly won't be anybody feeling sorry for themselves or down. St Mirren midfielder Greg Kilty spent eight years with Kilmarnock before making the move to Paisley this weekend. will be just the second time he has returned to Rugby Park since leaving the club and he's hoping for an easier challenge than his very first reunion with his old teammates. I, I, I think, I can't actually remember, I think Ethan got sent off early in the game so probably didn't touch the ball too much after that. So we were doing to 10 men for about 80 minutes so it was just a running session. So um, no, I can't actually remember um, it being too bad. So... Um, but no, it'll be, be interesting to see this one, obviously the second time going back, because we only put them once away from home last year, so um, that'll be interesting. Obviously, got a lot of friends that are come on fans as well, so I'm sure I'll be getting pleasant shouts for them as well. Lee's gone early with it, what are you going for? I think it's a wee test for St Man, they've had a they're great season, but obviously losing a game that you could have been in a semi-final, it's a big, big disappointment, so the players will really have to pick themselves up. I, I can't split the two of them at all. So I'm going to go for a draw as well. I'm going to go one each. Yeah. Oh, oh. One each for me as well. Did you go one each? One each. I, I actually looking here and I'm thinking to myself, what did I go for from that for that pick? I, I absolutely can't remember what my selection for it was, Ruffy. So at the end of the day... It's in the books. Yeah. I think I've gone for a draw. I don't think I've... I can't split them either. I was just <coughs> looking there to see. And the reason I'm looking to see is that you can get involved as well with our predictor. Uh, you can join at any point and you could win yourself a monthly prize. <laughs> Certainly uh, there's an end of season prize that you might enjoy it's two places at the pfa scotland player of the year awards our table you can have a good night out with us certainly enjoyable really looking forward to it as ever it's um at the end of the season roughly everybody the players like to wind down <coughs> mm-hmm. celebrate one of their teammates winning an award and then having a wee jar at the bar afterwards yeah it's a great night uh, it's great to meet uh, a lot of guys you probably never met for a couple of seasons and uh, as long as you behave yourself uh, you're okay yeah, absolutely. Um, just on that, we're looking at the one game that we haven't talked about, which is not really um, a game that <clears throat> I think the purists will be going to see up at McDermott Park with St Johnston against Livingston. Uh, St Johnston <clears throat> free fall. <clears throat> excuse me. I think everybody thinks they're gone. This, this is this is a huge game for both. I think. I think if if St Johnston get beat here, I think that Stephen's going to be under major pressure. They, they're in danger of getting cut adrift. At the bottom, I think they've only got what one point or two points, Peter. And this is a game they'll be targeting for three points. Um, Livingston coming off the back of a heavy defeat during the week. It's going to be a very, very tight game. It's, f- it's going to be a horrible game, in fact. And Lee went nil nil the last game, and I'm going to go nil nil <coughs> this game. I'm looking at them, and I, I can't see. I can't see anything that could potentially be coming back from injury. I can't see anything that suggests to me that they could go on a run, Lee. And I'm, you know, I, I wish Stephen McLean the very best, but I think right now it's it's too tough a job for him to come in and try and salvage something. Yes, I, I don't. I don't see them turning it round at all, and I don't blame Stephen McLean at all with that. I just think. 
in some stages in some games of the season they've, they've been proven that they've that large parts of the game they've been <coughs> good enough and I think Livingston I've got players that have been over the course um, the bulk of the squad has been over the course and, and I, I I think Livingston if they win at St Johnston on deep deep trouble just look down to the, those two teams playing each yeah. other Ruffy are the two teams that I think will be in the bottom two places yeah well I, I've went for St Johnston and Dundee uh, so Johnson need the win, you know. I, I I just think every dog has his day, and I yeah. think in the back of Livingston playing in midweek, this is as good a chance as you'll get because they've obviously picked up some injuries. Yeah. So I'm going to go St Johnson to win two one. Wow, that's fantastic news. I think all of us. He feels sorry for people, didn't he? He's a big softy. Well, yes. <laughs> yeah. Pressure. I'll, I'll go for him to win. He, it certainly starts with an S. Yeah. Um, it's <laughs> certainly not softy. I think stupidity allows us the chance maybe to make up some points here, Tom. Because you're not doing too well. It does. I'm going to go for that. I think this is a nail down draw. Might be now, now or one, one. Every one. every manager this season we've said is under pressure. Has now revitalised themselves yeah. yeah so I think it's Stephen's turn tomorrow I don't think there's I think out of I think out of all the managers in all the categories I would suggest to you right now I mean Tony Docker is just in the job so he's alright nobody's mentioned it to him mm. Derek McInnes fine and dandy um, Martindale just maybe said he's under pressure a bit. No, Motherwell, um, no problem with Kettlewell, no problem with Stephen Robinson. Um, okay. And certainly no problem with Brendan Rogers. I mean, for God's sake, you know, mm -hmm. he's just in the door, calibre of manager, un undoubted quality. Um, I just think at that bottom end, um, sooner or later, somebody will pull the trigger, Lee, because that's the nature of it. That's what happens. Panic sets in before you get to January. That's the industry. That's the industry we're in. And I think, yes, that could make that might well happen and there'll be a host of names ready to come in and get the job if it does happen but what are they going to do different they, they need new players they need, they've they cut need the budget players. massively didn't they in the cut the budget yeah. they, they need they need freshness in the squad in the january window they need to go and get players in they probably need to get three four five out are they going to spend money to do that who knows yeah um okay it, it has got draw written all over it. i think i've gone for a draw in this one as well I'm going Livingston 1-0 from a set play. I went 2-1. Yeah, so okay. Um, just on that, I, I wonder what the crowd will be like for this, this game. Mm. I mean, this could be the lowest crowd of the Scottish Premiership season. <laughs> yes, I, I'm laughing and it's <clears throat> it's actually not funny. The, the magnitude of the game, you'd think all, everybody in Perth gets their supports St. Johnson, but that'll be remain to be seen. And obviously Livingston yes. should have a good... Um, it's horse trials on this Are we? Are we? <laughs> 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 God, oh, are we? <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> so, if this loss in Johnson, he was just about to slaughter no, Livingston. No, I was just about to say to you, I was just about to say to you, if that had been, <laughs> oh, if that been you or I, there would be hell to pay uh, on social media. Your own names would be in the gutter. But with these two who don't <laughs> deal with social media, they can get away with it because the odds in Ruffy uh, being asked to speak in Perth are remote to say the least um, but nevertheless um, listen could be a poor crowd not a great travelling support you can count them usually uh, the Livingston fans who travel and St Johnson fans are disillusioned when you're not winning they don't uh, usually get out there to support them only time will tell but I think that game could pr provide us with the lowest attendance of the season and we have been you know shouting out uh, you know the amount of fans who are coming out to support Scottish football but that one's going to be a tough ask English Premier League fixtures before we go here are the games and I think there's one screaming out at us uh, Villa Brighton Manchester United Crystal Palace Newcastle Burnley Wolves against Man City Bournemouth Arsenal West Ham Sheffield Everton against Luton Tottenham Liverpool Nottingham Forest, Brentford and Fulham against Chelsea. Uh, it's got the makings of a cracker. Certainly last week's North London derby was brilliant and you wonder what's going to be delivered between Tottenham and Liverpool. Well, certainly on the evidence of uh, what they've been producing, Jurgen Klopp, the Liverpool manager, is under no illusions of what type of Tottenham he's going to face. When you saw Celtic playing in recent years, um, what kind of coach he is, how good he is as a coach, and getting coming out to Tottenham in a, a I think they were all desperate for some offensive football, and he's delivering that obviously. And that in a year when Harry Kane left the club, um, yeah, he's doing extremely well. 
they, they do extremely well. Yeah, really exciting to watch. I think it's got the makings of a great game, Ruffy. Mm -hmm. um, you know, and it's one of those ones where I've been watching Ange Postacoglu's side at times a little bit here. I'm scared him with that passing out at the back, but he'll stick with it. And I think he'll come a cropper against Liverpool. Yeah, you can't complain. The supporters can't complain what they've done so far, particularly without Kane. I think Tam touched on it. They've not got any of the big name foreign players everybody else have got. They're all working together, but uh, it's home advantage, and I think they're good enough to get a draw here. Yeah, Lee. I watched them the North London derby, and I thought they were brilliant. Um, the same way, Ruffy. I'm going to go draw, and just has an ability to get the best out of players after after losing, arguably, arguably one of the best strikers in the world. He just seems to go on with it and get the best out of. Players. Yeah, yeah. I know you enjoyed the North London derby. Did you at any point look and think, <laughs> are they going to persist <laughs> with this playing it out from the back? Did you not even get nervous yourself watching them getting hemmed in? It's the it's the way they put, they press and they still it's the way Arsenal pressed with aggression and they still look to pass through it instead of that's me that was rubbish how you get it on my feet <laughs> squeeze and I'd chase after it so it's, it's testament he's given and just given the players the confidence to pass through that press and it's it's brilliant to watch yeah, yeah. Um, I think you're doing yourself a great disservice this is a game not to be missed rubbish. Peter oh, this fantastic. is going to be I'm going to go for four each what <laughs> I think this will be the game of the season. Straight face. Yeah. <laughs> Four each. Yes. You're right over that seat. Do you know what? It, uh, it's a seat. It, it's, it's just seat. mental. It's just <laughs> Honestly, game of the season, Peter. I would uh, say it's Go to great. The and put on nil nil. Yeah, it's great. To, <laughs> it's great to have you back off holiday. It's just we're not really sure when you're back. Um, but nevertheless, <laughs> uh, when he's there, you always get that fantastically ridiculous uh, comments and predictions from him. It's just it's wonderful to see. Um, Tam is really uh, of that new. We've had a few pundits over the years, uh, Ruffy, but Tam is of that new generation. They just throw grenades and then hide behind a curtain. <laughs> the only what opinion you're going to get one, Alan? The opposite was Tam. Kelly when he was doing these predictions and everything was nothing each yes absolutely nothing each can be an exciting game you know that <laughs> <laughs> that's right aye. That have been. well we that's get it was last be. fairy time it managed we get it we get an opinion out of him um, there were occasions last year when I know both of us thought just you know, maybe take Tam Cowan outside and <laughs> leather him <laughs> simple as that but uh, anyway you're going to go and watch Motherwell aren't you Yes. Yeah, fantastic. Yeah. Wow. And you've got your wig and your dress, so you're all right. Yes, you'll get in there without any, any great pelters from the Celtic been a, fans. Been the Motherwell men. Mm. Got to go and Motherwell legend. Go and watch them. Yeah, absolutely. Yes. Fantastic. Yeah. Uh, let me know what happens. <laughs> 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 anyway, you'll see the boards there. We're supporting uh, our that's local right behind club. behind the goals, yes. Yep, absolutely. Um, don't could, forget. He could actually get in and get a four. No thanks. Worth it. Yeah, I could have done that he, end. He, he could, by the way, but uh, <laughs> it, it, it'd be like a scene from Robin Hood when he was, when he was walking back to, to his chair. <laughs> anyway, apart from that, uh, don't forget to hit the subscribe button on our YouTube channel uh, to join the football family here. If you download the app, you'll get all the breaking news at your fingertips. We've got the website. We've also uh, got so much uh, for you to view in our unique video content and across all our social media platforms. Lots of people just clicking in uh, across Twitter or X uh, and of course our TikTok and Instagram as well as YouTube. So you've got all the coverage of Scottish football, English football and of course we look towards Europe and the Champions League Conference <coughs> and Europa as well. So it's all there at your fingertips. From Ruffy, from Lee, from Tam and myself, Peter Martin. And don't forget, Kerry and Ruffy and Tam are on in the preview tomorrow morning. Not to be missed. And, uh, of course, myself and Ali Graham will be with you, the new partnership, every Saturday. Ali will be with me from now on because he's reliable. That's the word I was looking for. Saturday afternoon we'll be there with your scores. Join us if you can.